Hi everyone, today we'll be looking at Multitask Prompted Training Enable Zero Shot Task Generalization Paper. Um, in this paper, um, the authors basically uh, train a model on multiple different tasks um, such as summarization, sentiment analysis, question answering, and um, they evaluate the perform and they fine tune the model um, based on these tasks and they evaluate the performance of the model on a completely unseen task or held out task. Uh, in this um, illustration, it is NLI, and uh, they measure the zero shot performance. So um, the different data sets on which they um, train and on which they evaluate are given here. So the ones in yellow uh, are the data sets which are used for training. And the ones in green are the data sets which they use for uh, generalization evaluation. Um, they use these green data sets to perform uh, zero shot evaluation on whether the model is able to generalize. So based on, uh, so the task is basically listed here. And uh, for each task, you have multiple uh, data sets, right? Extractive QA, for example, you have uh, four different data sets and so on. And um, they also have uh, a subset of the big bench data set. Um, and for each data set, they have multiple uh, prompts. And uh, that's how they generate their training data. So the training data basically consists of prompts from all these data sets. And each data set could have multiple uh, prompts. right? Um, so an example is shown here. So uh, let's say the task is uh, the uh, paraphrase, right? So here uh, you have two questions, um, and this is uh, these are the examples in the data sets, and you have a label or ground truth which is associated with these uh, examples. So uh, you apply an input template um, to each of these examples. So the template basically has question one, question two. Pick one. These questions are duplicates or not duplicates, right? So um, for each example, the prompt would be different because you would be plugging in question one and question two from each example. And then uh, you feed this to your language model, and uh, you would be uh, basically uh, getting some choices label. And in this case, you're uh, detecting whether the questions are duplicates or not duplicates. So this basically choices label is going to look like duplicates or not duplicates. And then you map that back to the label. And um, for, for the same data set and for the same task, you can have multiple prompts, right? So this was one prompt. You can have another prompt, which is shown here, right? I received the questions, question one and question two, are they duplicates? So um, another task would be like summarization, where you have document and summary. And this is going to be different per example. And then you have a template here, which basically tells you how to transform the example into a prompt by applying the template. right? And you can have multiple such templates for a particular task and for a particular data set. Right? Uh, similarly, for example, if you have to give NLI, you have like premise, hypothesis, and label. This is what is in your input data set. And um, this is converted into a prompt by applying the template. If premise is true, uh, is it also true that hypothesis, right? And uh, you'd be getting answers, and uh, the answers would be uh, could be yes, maybe, or no, which maps to entailment, neutral, or contradiction. And the way they um, collect these prompts for different data sets is uh, uh, by asking um, researchers that are around 36 different uh, contributors to manually write prompts uh, for these data sets. Right? And um, thus they ensure that there is like a diverse set of prompts. One person is not writing the prompts for everything. And uh, the only brief which is given to the um, annotators is that the prompts need to be uh, grammatical and uh, they need to be understandable to someone who is fluent in English and who may not have any prior experience with the task, right? 
and um, and they call these uh, proms as a uh, public pool of proms of p3 and uh, they totally have for 177 data sets they have around 2073 proms and um, for big bench uh, which is one of the uh, we, we saw a subset of tasks from big bench earlier and for these uh, the for these tasks the proms are basically provided by the maintainers so they reuse the same ones um, and uh, in terms of the experimental setup um, their model t0 is based off of t5 um, which also incorporates this um, uh, MLM style objective, right? And um, they use an adapted version of uh, T5 called LM adapted T5, which um, basically has a uh, is adapted to a standard uh, language modeling objective, right? To generate uh, natural text. So, um, so T0 basically is trained on a multitask mixture, which we have seen before, where you have uh, different tasks and different data sets per task and different prompts per data set. And, um, and they, for T0, the base model, they just use the data sets, which we've seen before. There's uh, T0 plus, which is the same model as T0. It has identical hyperparameters, but then it also has, um, it is trained on a mixture of GPT-3's evaluation data sets. So there are more data sets compared to T0. And um, T0++ plus plus also adds certain uh, data sets uh, from Superglue, right? So the data sets which, they, which the model has been, which these models have been trained on are different, but otherwise uh, the hyperparameters are uh, same and they're all initialized from 11 billion parameters version of T5 plus LM, which, which we've seen before. And um, they basically uh, choose the checkpoints based on the uh, performance on the validation data. And uh, so, so now for each data set, you would have uh, multiple accuracies based on different prompts, right? And uh, they report the median performance across the prompts. And they also uh, report the interquartile range um, to basically uh, see how robust the model is to different prompts. And these essentially are like different wordings of prompts. The task remains the same, right? Um, so this is an example. Uh, this this basically illustrates their uh, results. Um, they have their method, which is here uh, in green. Uh, they compare it with the baseline of T5 plus LM, 11 billion. So the baseline is uh, the adapted uh, T5 uh, language model. And um, T0 is an instruction tuned, fine tuned version of the same. And they also compare it with uh, different versions of GPT-3. And uh, they evaluate the zero shot performance as in there are no demonstrations in your uh, evaluation. And um, they basically evaluate this on uh, the held out task, which is NLI, co-reference resolution, sentence completion, and word sense. So this model has not been trained on these uh, tasks, right? And uh, each, dot basically uh, represents a performance for one prompt so you see multiple dots here and this is because of uh, because you have multiple prompts per data set right um, and uh, for gpt3 however they just use the prompts which are provided in the uh, gpt3 paper uh, which which probably uh, yields the best performance best validation performance for that particular data set and uh, you can see that uh, their model, which is fine-tuned on prompts across uh, collected from different tasks, uh, performs uh, better than GPT-3 or even the baseline um, for most of the uh, data sets here, right? Uh, this probably doesn't your, your, your. So um, this basically shows that multitask training is um, is good um, and and can be used as uh, 
an alternative to implicit task training. So with GPT-3, uh, the assumption is that the pre-training, during pre-training, the model has implicitly learned all these tasks and then it's able to perform uh, well in a zero-shot manner on unseen tasks, right? So here in this um, paper, they explicitly uh, train their uh, model T0 on uh, multiple different tasks. And you can see that the performance here is better than uh, uh, GPT-3's uh, performance, which has like implicit understanding of these tasks. And uh, then they conduct uh, some ablation experiments um, to look at the importance of the number of prompts as well as the number of data sets. So, um, so here you have uh, different number of prompts. So when you have zero prompts, uh, that basically means that the uh, model is not fine-tuned at all, uh, which essentially is the baseline model, P5 plus LM. And then you can have like one prompt uh, per data set. You're, uh, you're just fine-tuning the model on one prompt or 5.7 or 8.03 on an average, right? Um, and uh, so this basically, the, this box plot uh, shows the variation um, in performance uh, of, of that model on different prompts, right? So ideally you want this, if it's robust to the prompts, ideally you want this to be as uh, less spread as possible. And uh, that's what we see in some cases, right? Um, when you, if you train with like one prompt or 5.7 prompts, the spread is a little more pronounced compared to if you train with more prompts, right? And um, almost always the performance is uh, better when you train with more number of uh, prompts. And um, it's, it's almost always performing better than the baseline. But the variation is, um, the baseline variation in some cases is a lot. And um, in most cases, if you train with a lot more prompts, you can see that it is more robust and the variation is uh, smaller, right? And then they also compare um, the effect of uh, data sets, right? So earlier we said that they have T0, T0 plus, and T0 plus plus, and each uh, version, T0 plus is more number of data sets compared to T0, and T0 plus plus is even more number of data sets. And um, they look at the zero shot uh, performance of these on, on uh, specific data sets here. And um, you see that um, T0 plus um, plus mostly gives better performance compared to the other uh, models. Uh, meaning to say that if you train your model on uh, multiple tasks, on multiple data sets, uh, that's better than training it on fewer number of data sets and fewer number of tasks. And uh, but however, you you still do see that there is uh, there's a big uh, uh, spread, right? Um, indicating that these probably are not very uh, robust to their uh, prompt wordings, right? Uh, because the spread is basically caused by uh, different prompts on the same uh, model and uh, different prompts on the same data set. They also evaluate, um, they compare T0 and GPT-3's uh, robustness, and they find that uh, T0 is more robust compared to uh, GPT-3. And the interesting thing here is T0 is basically your 11 uh, billion model, and GPT-3, you have all the way from 6 to 175 billion models, so you can use a smaller model and um, fine-tune these on uh, instructions and get better performance compared to a bigger model. And uh, yeah, so basically um, this paper uh, introduces T0 model, which is um, uh, a, a version of uh, T5 model, which is fine-tuned on, uh, on these prompts. And, and these prompts are from multiple different data sets and multiple uh, tasks. So, um, and it shows that this model basically outperforms uh, some, a model which is like much bigger in size, like GPT-3. And uh, this uh, sort of underscores the importance of having uh, diverse prompts, as well as um, increasing number of data sets uh, for each 
task, right? Which is like the multitask uh, and, and also having multiple different tasks to train your model on. And um, they also release uh, the prompts they have, uh, the collection of prompts they have uh, online. Uh, and the appendix, if you're interested, you can take a look at uh, different prompts for different data sets. Uh, that is pretty interesting.